and low. So, the SW2812B LEDs, addressable, uh, and are they worth buying? Well, this was a five meter pack of LEDs. Um, I've bought LEDs before, um, like these ones here. Not sure the make of these. Uh, it took me a long time to finally get these running and I ended up actually running them on the code for the 2811, which I think these might be based on, but it's a, a Chinese chip that's on this, so nobody knows. But they will run on that code, except for they'll only go as far as 10 LEDs, and then it won't light any more up using the uh, fast LED library. Because uh, the idea was I wanted to make a clock um, with LEDs, you know, just for something to do. Um, and originally, this is what I came up with. Now, these are just uh, single color LEDs, and that is my uh, my mess. <laughs> and I didn't want to finish soldering that mess. Um, I could get it running, but I'd have to write all my own code. So I thought, well, that's too too much of a faff having to write the libraries and code and everything else so what i wanted to what i wanted to do was is do one using these and uh, this is what i came up with which is this one and as you can see you only see two leds now the reason for that being is is because if you, the, if you see the ic on there from this copper bit here to just here where it was joined that's all classed as one LED when using addressable ones because uh, that chip drives three at three a time so whatever that chips output in color that's what that will do so you may as well class them three LEDs as one LED um, so what I ended up having to do was inside there I ended up having to fold so I had the two out, like so, I'd cut it there, but then I was having to fold that back, like so, so I've just got the two LEDs, and then I've stuck them inside like that. So then I had a problem with the light leaching through and escaping out of here. So then I had to make some caps to put in, which fit pretty good, to be fair, um, just to help diffuse the light but then I found the problem like I was saying it would only light 10 LEDs it would get so far and it would this was just mumbo jumbo <clears throat> it was uh, you couldn't get the characters to work and yeah I know the code works because I've seen it's it's literally wired up exactly the same so moving on so then we bought these ones which I just received uh, yesterday and obviously when I get something new from China or wherever I get it from, anything electronic, I always have to make something with it. Uh, is that focusing? I'm trying to focus in on these. So these are the SW, uh, the WS, sorry, WS2812B. And the reason you know that the 12B is because of the, the 5 volt. Uh, the 12s, so the 2812s, the WS 2812s are 12 volt. Um, the problem with 12 volt is if you wanted to run it off an Arduino, is you've got that problem of voltage. This ain't going to give you no 12 volts. Um, so obviously, I was having to power these up. I mean, you can you can run them. The way you do it is, so if you come to the end of there, that's the other one, isn't it? So on these ones, it would be. So what you'd do is you'd, you'd have your like a boost converter or something giving you 12 volts you'd, you'd tie your your positive obviously to your 12 v there your data would go to your arduino as normal your grand would go to your grand or your power you know whatever you're using to boost the power but you also you'd need another grand to go to the uh to the arduino so that it there's a voltage reference um otherwise they won't run but obviously with these these are five volts Nah, obviously I can't light, well, on the board that I made, there's 220, 224 in total LEDs. Um, and this is all that's left out of a 5 meter strip. So, I made this. 
Now these are still wired as they would have been on that reel. So it's still like a strip, it's just that obviously you can't turn a corner and come back. So I've had to cut them and then re-solder them. So I've cut it and then turned it around and then soldered it. And then the same this side. And then it's it the snakes down like that all the way down. As you can see. So you've got data in. D in in the middle. And obviously at the end of the other side of that is data out. And then it goes data in. So all your data in is coming out on that side. And then you've got your data out that side at the end there. And obviously then you want to data in. Which is what that one is. So obviously I'm coming across the data in again. Back through the system. And that's data out, so then data in, and then back. As long as you keep, keep an eye on your datas, you make sure your data out ties your data in. You can't really go wrong, so that's basically like a long strip. <clears throat> now the reason I wanted addressable LEDs is because you can do some quite uh, quite cool things with them. Like you can, you can animate and you can do all sorts with the colours. Um, I don't know much about doing anything like that, but luckily for us we don't actually have to do that because there's people out there that's already uh, already wrote the code so without further ado I don't know if you can see that, but it's the, basically the colours are rotating and then it's also zooming in and out as well that's the effect it's got now this is a lot more, like the colours, how you see them now, uh, they look more vibrant around my hand. That's actually how they are looking at them in person. Whereas the camera's filtering a lot of it out, so uh, it doesn't look as uh, doesn't look as effective. But basically this is running uh, the, ske the sketch and li sorry, the library we're using is uh, Fast LED. And obviously we've set it to the SW2812. It will run on the the 11 or the 12 or the 12B. It will run on any of them. The code will. Um, it's just what's what type these LEDs are. Um, and obviously, them chip the chips are actually inside these as well. Um, so, uh, so what I want to do now is I'll show you the code. I mean, it's really easy. They're really easy to wire up. Obviously, these are five volt. It needs five volt. I've got it five volt from here. So I've tapped into the back here. So it's only taking power from here. None of this power that this this LED frame here is taking is coming from this board. If you did, say goodbye to your Arduino. Um, so obviously we need the 5 volts, which we've got for the strip. We need a ground, which is white for some reason. I'm not sure why. And that's this one here. So if it's this way up and this connector is at the top, when you look at the back of it, it's the bottom two. The one on the left is your positive 5 volts from your USB. And the one on the right is your ground from your USB. That way we can power this board and it won't affect this. This is stone cold. There's no heat on there. In fact, I can prove to you it's stone cold. Let's get the temperature gun out. There we go. No heat whatsoever. In fact, even this board's running cold as well. No heat spikes anywhere. I have turned it down though by the power consumption and the reason for that being is these if you look at these you see that little there little brown thing that's a uh, capacitor and that's just to help smooth and help keep a constant voltage across these because obviously the longer the strip gets the harder it is for the voltage unless you add like a link in so where you've got the power here you'd take a, a ground and then mix it with, uh, I don't know, say so many down and then put another ground in. So you'd put them, tie them, tie them three together, well, four, tie them four together. And then same again, tie another four together. And that'll just help distribute that power across the board. Because, um, like I say, you get losses, build up and all sorts. So these are running pretty, pretty damn smooth. Um, I'm actually quite impressed with them, to be honest. Uh, they're really easy to set up. Like I say, one wire, which is this normally uh, with fast LED normally it'll be pin I think it's pin three which is what it's normally default set to I set to five I don't like wasting uh, PWM pins even though five is a PWM pin um, so yeah really easy what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to uh, how to get hold of the library so to get the library all we need to do is get tools I'm going to go down to Manage board, uh, library, sorry, not manage boards. <laughs> uh, click on here. 
type fast. LED, all is one word. And it's this one here you want. And just install that. Once that's installed, you simply come across here to file. Uh, and if you get down, you should find one called Fast LED, and it's the XY matrix. There's the one I'm running at the moment, but there's, there's plenty of other examples here. They're all different things. I know what you want. You'd have to make matrix matrix with them. You know, if you might just want to run a, have a strip line around and want to be able to run them. Um, if he's going to do that, this is a this demo reel. I think it's this one, anyways. Um, it's got quite a quite a lot of different uh, colours and that in it. So it's uh, yeah, it's quite good for demonstrating. Um, obviously, I want to play with the matrix, so that's why we're using that. Uh, so it's just a matter of loading that up which is this and then when you're on your fast LED.h if it's set up like this one is or that might even be different this uh, number here but if it is um, you can leave that as three if you want to use three freeze tied up something else change it whatever I think it has to be a well yeah it does have to be a PWM pin I changed mine to five so I'm going to change that to five on this uh, obviously out uh, of the 12 or well, you can put 12b it doesn't make any difference uh, brightness, I'm going to drop that down to 8. And I'm just going to scroll down and then it was, there's your parameters for uh, your width and your height. Well, mine's a 14 by 16, so 14 across and then it's 16 down. Um, and that's it, and that's the layout. There's even an example on here on how to set up the, the uh, wires. So it might be worth you getting this first before you get your LEDs if you haven't already got them. And obviously, if you're not sure on how to set them up, it's it's basically just keeping the strip. Obviously, if you could turn the strip, you would. You wouldn't even have to cut it. Um, you don't have to solder the ends either. You can just um, you can buy clips that go on the end and sit on top of the copper pads. The thing is, some of the copper pads that's been soldered, you might not have to get them on. So you might have to like use some flux or uh, not flux, sorry. Um, solder mop use some solder mop or something or uh, one of them sucky things to take the solder off the pads because uh, it will stop them from going in um, I think that's it yeah that's it and then it's just a matter then of just clicking upload once you've obviously you've got to set your board and that up <coughs> I'll send the code to it now that's gone up and straight away it works uh, and that's how, your, how easy yours should be. Now, this has been the easiest set of LEDs ever that I've ever had, where I can type that in or type fast LED in and then get something that's going to run them. Because these, these are the most common, so if you're going to get any, these are the type to get and try and get 5 volts. They run a lot less power, because um, there's and not only that, they run cooler as well, because there's not. There's not all them resistors on like you've got on the uh, 12 volt ones. You've got a resistor for every LED, and then resistors start to get warm, and that's where a lot of your power gets wasted. Whereas these don't, they've just got some even capacitors right through. Uh, if you're making something within like a 16 16 range, then uh, 5 volt ones are perfect. Um, and that's it, that's basically it. So uh, I hope that helps you out, and uh, thanks for watching, and uh, subscribe.